It was back in July when we last built a cool menu experience, so it's been a while. And while I was on the hunt for some fresh inspiration, I thought what better place to check than the sites of the month. That's when I landed on this website that won award site of the month in April and as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to try recreating their full screen navigation. This full screen menu that they have built is seriously cool, no doubt about that and I have managed to replicate a version that's really close with all the micro animations intact. In today's video, I'll walk you through how to build this entire full screen menu using GSAP. It's fully responsive and will cover every detail, the interactive menu toggle, the overlay animation and even the clean text effects you see on the original. Just a heads up that we'll be building this one with vanilla javascript and not Next.js because based on the last few videos, I've realized that Next.js tends to make the videos like these a bit long and since I've committed to posting two videos a week, keeping them concise is key right now. But if you are interested, I'll be sharing the source code of the Next.js version 2 for the pro members. You can check out the link in the description for more details. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's begin by setting up the structure outside the menu. First, we'll add a logo which will be a simple link. Next, we have the menu toggle button. This button is divided into two parts, the icon and the copy. The icon will feature a hamburger icon which will create with CSS. It consists of two horizontal bars and to help with styling later, we'll add a data attribute called data position to both bars one for the top and one for the bottom. For the copy, we'll use a simple paragraph element that says menu. By default, this toggle button will be in a closed state when the page loads, so make sure to add the closed class to the toggle container. Now moving on to the menu, we'll split it into two columns. In the left column, we'll place three key elements, the logo, the links and a video element. The logo link will be once again wrapped in a div. For the links, we'll create anchor elements, each wrapped in a div with the class link. This will allow us to animate the position of the links when the menu is opened. Next is the video wrapper, which will contain a video element. For this project, I'll be using a video stored locally in the project folder but you can also use a URL if you prefer. Make sure the video is set to autoplay, muted and looped so it plays seamlessly in the background. For the right column, we'll only need two elements, the socials and the header. The socials will be split into two sub-columns. I'll be adding some placeholder text here for now. The header will just have a single h1 element. Later on, we'll use JavaScript to split it into individual letters wrapped with span elements for animation. And that's the HTML setup for now. Let's move on to the styling part. First, we'll apply a global reset by setting the margin, padding and box sizing to ensure consistent spacing across browsers. Now for the HTML and body, we are setting them to take up the full width and height of the viewport and we are applying a background image that's centered and covers the entire screen. I'm also using the circular std font for the text across the site. Next, let's style the logos. Both the main logo and the menu logo are positioned absolutely in the top left corner with a large lighter font. The main logo will be in black and the menu logo will be white to stand out against the dark menu background. For the menu toggle button, we are positioning it in the top right corner, giving it a rounded, pill-like shape with a smooth transition for when it expands or collapses. The background color is set to a dark shade. I'm using transition with a custom cubic bezier timing function to make the width change smooth. By default, we'll keep the toggle in a closed state but when it's opened, the width shrinks and the menu copy disappears.
Inside the menu toggle, we have an icon that starts as a small circle. As you hover over the menu, the circle grows larger using the clip path property for smooth scaling. I have also set up transitions here for an organic feel. Now for the hamburger icon inside the toggle, it's two horizontal bars and will animate their position and rotation when the menu opens. We are also applying transitions here so that the bar smoothly transform into an X shape on toggle. Moving on to the full screen menu, it's position fixed to cover the entire viewport and is split into two columns. For the menu's initial state, I'm using clip part to hide it completely but will animate that later to reveal the menu smoothly. This was another clip path I initially commented out to focus on the layout first. The links are styled with large bold text to match the full screen look. The video element is wrapped inside a container with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. This ensures it scales well with different screen sizes. For the right column, the socials are divided into two sub-columns and I have added some placeholder text for now. Each piece of text is initially positioned off-screen with transform and opacity set to zero, getting them ready for animation later. Finally, the header which contains the H1 element is styled with large lightweight text. Each letter will be animated individually later by splitting them into span elements using JavaScript. I'll also paste some more CSS for the responsive version. Now since we are done with writing CSS, let me go back and uncomment the clip path, transform and opacity properties I had previously commented out. 
Now we are all set to jump into JavaScript to bring these elements to life with animations. First, we add the event listener for when the DOM content is fully loaded. This ensures the page elements are ready before we start manipulating them with JavaScript. We start by registering the GSAP custom is plugin, which allows us to create custom using curves for our animations. I have set up an ease called hop using a cubic bezier curve that will give the animations a nice springy effect. Next, we grab the menu toggle button, the full screen menu, the individual links inside the menu, and the social links into variables for easy access. We also define a flag called ease animating to prevent the menu from being clicked while an animation is running. Before we dive into the animations, let me add a function called split text into spans. This function takes any text inside the header h1 element and splits each letter into individual span elements. This is crucial for later when we animate each letter separately. Now let's handle the menu toggle functionality. When the menu toggle button is clicked, the first thing we need to do is check if an animation is already in progress. If it is, we simply return and prevent any further actions. If the menu is in its closed state, we remove the closed class and add the open class. This sets the stage for the opening animation. And if the menu is already open and the toggle is clicked again, we need to reverse the animations. We remove the open class and add back the closed class, signaling that we are closing the menu. We also set the flag to true so the user can't trigger another animation until this one completes. Next, here is where GSAP comes in. We animate the menu's clip path, transitioning from fully hidden to fully visible. We use the hoppies we defined earlier to give it a smooth transition. Once the animation starts, we enable pointer events on the menu so it becomes interactive. After a short delay, we animate the links and social text, making them slide up into view with a staggered effect and fade in smoothly. We also reveal the video background by animating its clip path using the same hoppies for consistency. The header text is then animated with each letter rotating back into view and scaling up creating a satisfying reveal effect. Again we stagger the animation so each letter appears one after another for a more dynamic look. Now just like before, we set the flag to true to prevent multiple animations from overlapping. This time, we animate the menu's clip path back to its hidden state. Once that's done, we reset all the elements, the links, social text, video and header back to their original position, ready to animate again next time the menu is opened. After everything is reset, we set the flag back to false, allowing the menu toggle to be clicked again. And that's it. That's how you can build a fully responsive, full-screen animated navigation menu using JavaScript and GSAP. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.